The subcommittee will come to order. Uh, the balance of my time to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Dr. Murphy. I thank the chairman uh, for convening this hearing, and I want to thank the witnesses for being here as well. In light of yesterday's tragic shooting at Fort Hood involving a soldier under treatment for a behavioral health disorder, and news this week out of Pittsburgh of a mother who said she heard voices commanding her to drown her two young children in a bathtub, today's hearing has a sad element of timeliness to it. But let's keep in mind, most persons with mental illness are not violent and tragically are more frequently the victims of violence. But to never hear the breaking news of a homeless man being robbed or beaten or a person with mental illness losing their job. Over the last year, the Oversight and Investigations Committee I chair held a series of forums and hearings to review our nation's mental health system and this bill, the Helping Families and Mental Health Crisis Act as a result of those hearings. And with anything, there's misinformation about this legislation, which I'm glad you've convened this hearing so we can continue to work forward on perfecting it. Fifty years ago, our nation confronted the atrocities of asylums, warehouses for those whose illnesses medical science could not yet treat. And at that time, this committee moved legislation to close those places and help individuals live in the community. Many were getting treatment, many were not. And for half a century, we have operated under the illusion that having done something, we did the right thing. We didn't. Unfortunately, that illusion has been shattered by the heartbreaking daily tragedies that prove our mental health system is broken and failing the very people who need help most. The stories are haunting and the numbers are staggering. 3.6 million people with serious mental illness don't get treatment. There's over 40,000 suicides a year, 20 soldier suicides each day, another 1.3 million attempts at suicide. There's only one child psychiatrist for every 2,000 children with a mental health disorder. It's a system where the largest, the three largest mental health hospitals are actually jails, and there's a shortage of 100,000 psychiatric beds nationwide for those who are in acute crisis. A rule to protect privacy that needs clarifications because it's frustrated a countless number of physicians and family members and generated over 70,000 complaints. And a mental health agency that, until recently, employed as many dentists as it did psychologists and psychiatrists. And this is what the American taxpayer buys for $125 billion. That's why we introduced uh, this bill and engage in meaningful reform. It has several of those elements that just presented by the chairman and empowering parents and caregivers by breaking down the barriers that prevent communication, increases access to acute care psychiatric beds, provides alternatives to inpatient care through assisted outpatient treatment, it expands access to the underserved and rural populations, creates an assistant secretary of mental health to scrutinize federal programs and promote evidence-based care, ensures mental health patients enrolled in Medicare and Medicaid have access to the full range of medications to keep them healthy and out of the hospital, advances critical research at the National Institutes of Mental Health like the Brain Research Initiative, moves promising evidence-based care like the recovery after initial schizophrenic episode, improves quality and expands access to integrated medical and mental health care at community mental health providers, extends health information technology so mental health providers can communicate and work with primary care physicians, and ensures greater accountability from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. For far too long, those who need help have been getting it the least, and where there is no, no help, there is no hope. We can, must, and will take mental illness out of the shadows of ignorance, despair, neglect, and denial, and into that bright light of hope. And it starts with the Helping Families and Mental Health Crisis Act. I look forward to hearing the comments of our witnesses today. I yield.